Aloha everyone, my name is Blaine and I want to welcome you to New Hope Leonard Online. Thank you for tuning in with us today. In a few moments, we'll have a great message for you. So I'd like to encourage you to share this link and invite a friend, coworker, and family member to join us. Our services can also be viewed on all of these online platforms, so feel free to invite others to watch our services there as well. In a few moments, we're going to worship God through our giving. But first, I'd like to share with you how your giving is helping to make a difference. As many of you know, New Hope Winward financially sponsors 18 faith-based and community organizations, both locally and around the world. Out of those 18, eight are churches here in the islands that we invest in and partner with to reach our state for Jesus Christ. We'd like to hear from Pastor John Cabello of New Hope Lihui on how your generosity is helping to make a huge impact on their church and in their community. Take a look. Welcome everybody. This is my beautiful wife, Rhonda, and New Hope Winwood. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. For being awesome. We want to thank you for your hearts towards us and, and you're willing to, to give into a vision here at New Hope Winwood on the beautiful Garden Island of Kauai. We'll be able to do some amazing things thanks to your support of our vision to reach, restore, and, and release. release. That is correct. And one way we've been doing that, Rhonda's going to tell you right now, something we'd be able to do in the middle of this pandemic. That's yes, for nine weeks we did pastors, police, pastors, and platters, and we fed over 6,400 people in our community. That is right. Teaming up with local partners here in Kauai, we were able to feed folks who were in need over nine weeks. And now we're giving up for a new thing to be doing, and we'll be giving out once a month um, gift cards and feeding our population also here on the island of Kauai. And that is thanks to your giving. So thank you so much. We really, really appreciate you for loving us and caring for us. And something else that's happening also is lifting up leaders to the next level, able to pour into leaders' lives with, 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 with things that they need to get them moving forward. And one person who's getting lifted up is this beautiful woman next to me who will be going to Pac Rim University here to take a class and become a licensed four square, four square pastor. pastor. So she'll be coming up past you within our church. Thank you so much thank for allowing us to do these things. Amen. Yeah, we greatly appreciate you guys. Pastor Dave, thank you for all that you do. Your church, you know what an amazing pastor you are and your heart for those around you. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. We're so appreciative of you. May God bless you and keep you and thank you for loving us and loving those throughout the world and spreading the gospel message to your hearts to support and to give. We love you. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Aloha. New Hope Lihui, a church of 100 people, has grown significantly in the last few years and has tripled in their attendance. There are now 300 people who call New Hope Lihui their home church. New Hope Windward, it's because of your generosity and selfless giving that churches are able to extend their reach even further and make a huge kingdom difference in their communities. Thank you for continuing to sacrificially give even in a time such as this, so that more and more lives and families in Hawaii are transformed by the power of Jesus. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the Give tab on our website, you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Another way to give is by texting the word donation to the number on your screen and follow the instructions. Or if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to partner with you to reach communities across our islands, nation, and world for Jesus. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity to partner with Pastor John and New Hope Lihui and are excited for all that you're doing in and through them as a church to spread the good news of Jesus to the people of Kauai. We pray that you would continue to provide for and resource them so that they can reach many more lives and families on their island. Thank you for New Hope Windward and for those who continue to faithfully give. We worship you through our giving today, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Before we get into today's message, I'd like to again encourage you to invite someone to tune in with us today. Again, on the screen you'll see the many different platforms that we stream our services to. Text or forward the message link and have them join us for our services. Today we're continuing in our message series, Stay Positive, and we're going to hear a great message from Pastor Dave. So wherever you're joining us from, would you join me in welcoming Pastor Dave? 
Well, welcome to New Hope Windward Online. We are so glad that you're with us today. And two weeks ago, we started a series called Stay Positive. If you haven't checked out those messages online, I highly encourage you to do so because we're learning from God's Word. How do we stay positive during this pandemic? How do we stay positive in life's problems? Now, what we've been doing is we've been looking at people in the Bible who went through very difficult, overwhelming circumstances, and we're learning how they stayed positive in those problems. And so today, we're going to look at the life of David, as he is in the Old Testament, and David went through some gnarly problems. And we're going to look at a chapter in his life where God helped him to move from being discouraged to encouraged, from fatigued to strengthened, from resentment to freedom, from rejected to supported. Now, this is very important. If you and I do what David teaches us to do today, here's what we can experience. We can have God help us move from being discouraged to encouraged. Those times that we're really fatigued and tired and we feel like giving up, we can then be strengthened by God to keep on keeping on. We can learn to let go of resentment so we can experience the freedom from bitterness and we can learn how to deal with those times when we're rejected we're hurt and then we can feel supported and so what did david do to stay positive well we're going to learn from first samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 31 and i want to give you a little bit of a backdrop from david's life okay so david was one of eight brothers and he was the youngest and often the youngest are the most liked, but in David's case, he was rejected by his brothers and he was not preferred by his father. So David experienced a lot of family rejection, as some of us have experienced as well. And David, he was a shepherd. And back in these days, a shepherd's job was the lowliest job. It was a dirty job. It had massively long hours. It was a very lonely job because you just spent hour upon hour upon hour alone with the sheep. And, and it was just this, this challenging job. But even though David was rejected and he was a lowly shepherd, God still had a plan for his life, just like God has a plan for yours and mine. And God had planned for David to one day become the king of Israel. So David is this lowly shepherd, and one day this prophet named Samuel comes to David's family, and he prophesies, he foretells that one day David will be the king of Israel. And so David, in the story that we're looking at today, he's not the king of Israel yet. He doesn't have the crown. The king at this time is a guy by the name of Saul. So everybody just say Saul. Saul. Okay, so Saul is the king. And many of us know the story of David and Goliath. So David has killed Goliath, and now David's been promoted to be a general in Saul's army. So that's the scene that we're in. And David is fighting battles for Saul. And David and his army are having victory after victory after victory. And David is getting very famous, and Saul as an insecure leader, is getting very jealous. And so how does Saul deal with his jealousy? He tries to kill David on numerous occasions. Now, let me just put this into perspective for us, okay? I want you to think about one of your most difficult bosses, okay? Go ahead and just think about him right now. Now, imagine that boss you're thinking about taking a spear and throwing it at you, trying to kill you. That's what David's boss was like, okay? So he had a difficult job, right? It was so difficult. But you know the amazing thing about David is that even though Saul mistreated him so poorly, he kept loving Saul. He kept serving Saul. He kept fighting for Saul. And this leads us to the first step to staying positive in our problems. Here it is. You may want to write this down. You need to release your resentments. You know, a lot of times we don't think we have any resentment, and oftentimes we don't. But here's what I've learned about resentment, is sometimes we can have low levels of resentment that's flying under the radar of our awareness. So let me ask you, is there anybody you need to release your resentments towards? Are there any problems you're going through that you need to release 
resentment towards. You know, I, none of us have been throwing literal spears towards people we're upset with like Saul did. But sometimes we can throw verbal spears towards those we love the most. And that can be an indication we have some resentment in our hearts. Sometimes we may not throw those verbal spears at somebody, but we can talk about them behind their back. The Bible calls that gossip, and we're, we're throwing the spear about that person. We're talking about them. That can be an indication of resentment. So let me ask you this. Have you been grumbling about anybody? Maybe it's somebody you work with. Maybe it's somebody you live with. Maybe it's a, it's a friend. Have you been complaining about anybody? Because if so, you might have some resentment that you need to release towards that person. Let me give you an example of this in my life. So years ago, I was noticing that uh, I was becoming quickly agitated with certain people and with certain problems. And I would find myself getting upset quickly over things that didn't typically upset me and anger me. And so I decided I need to go to a Christian counselor and just kind of process this, see what's going on underneath the hood of my heart. So I went to the counselor and we prayed and we started processing. And the, the counselor said, you know what, Dave, you might have some unforgiveness in your heart that you're not aware of. Because I didn't feel like I had any unforgiveness. I, I choose to forgive people regularly. And so he said, here's an exercise I encourage you to do. He said, why don't you go to the beach and I want you to think about the things that have irritated you, that have angered you, that have frustrated you. And I want you to pick up a rock for each of those frustrations. And then I want you to choose to forgive the person that you have been frustrated with or the person that mistreated you, the person that wronged you. I want you to choose to forgive them symbolically by throwing that rock into the water. And so I was like, okay. So I thought, well, I, get, I better go to a a beach that has a lot of rocks. So I went to Almohada Beach and I went there, I sat down and I just said, Lord, I'm not aware of any resentments I have in my heart, but I have been complaining about some things. And so if I have any, I want to forgive everybody. And so God helped me process that as I think through this. So I grabbed a rock and I just thought about uh, something that somebody did that was really frustrating to me. And I just said, Lord, I choose to completely forgive them. I'm letting go of what they did to me completely. And I'm forgiving them as you have forgiven me. And I took that rock and I just hurled it far into the ocean and whoosh, and that rock sunk down to the bottom of the ocean. And I knew I could not go back and pick up that rock. See, true forgiveness is when you completely forgive, when you you choose to forgive and you then don't go back and rehearse and nurse and or talk about that person and you know you just keep rehearsing and nursing it that's not true forgiveness and so i knew i forgiven them i picked up another rock and i thought of another thing that that had happened to me that was very painful and and i just said i completely forgive them and i picked up another rock oh, and then when when that happened yeah i just completely forgive them and I just picked up rock after rock and I just said, God, is there anything else I need to forgive? And whether I felt I had fully forgiven or not, I just kept throwing rocks in for the things that had happened to me recently and the things that had happened in the past. And it was an interesting exercise because honestly, during the exercise, I was kind of, it was frustrating because you're thinking about how you've been mistreated. But when I was done throwing the rocks in the water and I had chosen to forgive everybody completely, you know how I felt? I felt free. I felt that freedom from forgive, unforgiveness. I felt free from bitterness. I felt free because I released my resentments. So let me ask you, is there anybody that you need to let go of a rock of resentment towards? I would encourage you today, today, choose to forgive them. Choose to forgive those who have wronged you. You know, as I was at the beach, I had an interesting experience after I'd thrown the rocks into the water. And God reminded me of a verse in the book of Micah. And he was speaking this to me. And he basically said this to me, and I'll show you the verse in a moment, but he said this. He said, Dave, what you just did where you forgave those people who've wronged you, God said, 
I did that for every single sin you did wrong towards me. Dave, I took those offenses, those sins, and I have cast every single one into the bottom of the sea. Take a look at this verse. I think it'll encourage you. He, God, will turn again and have mercy on us. He will put away our iniquities and he will cast all of our sins into the bottom of the sea. Isn't that just an amazing image that God will take your sins and mine and cast them all into the sea? It's just such a great image of how he completely forgives us. And you know what? God doesn't rehearse and nurse our sins that we've done. He completely leaves them in the heart of the bottom of the ocean. And you know what? When we do that with others and we completely forgive them, we release our resentments, we're being just like God. And so you want to stay positive? Release your resentments. All right, let's jump back into the story. So David has built an army of 600 men, and he didn't have a large, well-trained army like Saul's. He had this group of guys that consisted of men who were distressed, they were, they were discontented, and they were in debt. And they didn't have a lot of formal training, but they're still fighting battles with David and fighting for Saul. So David is still on the same side of Saul, fighting battles for him, but he's not fighting with Saul because Saul's trying to kill him. And so David and his army are going into battle after battle after battle. And this is where we jump into 1 Samuel, and this is the scene that we have. Now, I want you to envision what I'm about to describe to you in your mind, okay? So picture this. So David and his army have just fought the enemy Philistine army, and they have had victory. So they're coming back from war. They're tired. They're exhausted. So just picture you and I are walking with David and his army. We're tired from the battle. We're, get, we're excited to get home where we can see our children, see our wives, you know, kiss them, and get some much-needed rest and replenishment in our campsite where we've lived for a year and four months. And the place where they lived, the camp, was called Ziklag. And so again, envision this. We're coming towards Ziklag. We're excited to hear our wives start singing the victory songs from the battle we just won. We're excited to pick up our kids and hug them and, and kiss our wives and get some food and some rest. And so we all approach Ziklag. And instead of hearing songs of victory, we hear silence. We see no kids playing in the streets of Ziklag. We, we sniff and we don't smell the sweet Hawaiian bread baking in the oven. We don't smell the scent of beef stew cooking. Instead, what we smell are smoldering ruins. And what we realize is that our encampment has been completely burned down and destroyed. And so as David and his men were surveying the smoldering tents and destruction of their camp, of their home, they realized that there's some remnants, some evidence that the Amalekite army has come and they have taken all of their possessions, they've taken their wives and their kids, they've kidnapped them. And so how would you feel if that were you? How do you think David's men responded towards him once they realized that the wives and kids were gone? Take a look up on the screen. Let's see what happens to David's band of brothers. Do you think they stuck with him and said, all right, we're with you like we have been in all these previous battles? Or do you think they had a different response? Take a look at this. 1 Samuel 36. David was now in great danger because all of his men, every single one of them, were very, say it with me, bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And watch this. And they began to talk about stoning him. Whew. David's band of brothers did not band with him. They banded against him. They didn't want to fight with him. They wanted to fight against him. They wanted to kill him. And all of a sudden, imagine David. Here are, the, here are the men that he's been loyal to. He's sacrificed for them. He, he, he's protected them. They fought together. And now they're fighting against him. You know, all of us go through 
the experience that David went through in the sense that David had what I'll call a Ziklag experience. Now, what is a Ziklag experience? Ziklag is when you've been fighting some problem in your life and you've had some victory there and then another problem arises just like it did for David and his men. Ziklag is when you're fatigued and exhausted because you've had problem after problem after problem that you've been going through. And let's just be honest, in this pandemic, we've had problem after problem after problem and it's left many of us fatigued, emotionally fatigued, many marriages are relationally fatigued, many coworkers are fatigued. We're fatigued, that's a Ziklag experience. Ziklag is when you've lost something valuable to you. David and his army lost their kids, their possessions, and their wives. Ziklag is when you lose something that's near and dear to you. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've lost your income. That's a Ziklag experience. Ziklag is when others turn on you. It's when people betray you. When people who were once on your side are now against you. And some of you are feeling that right now with those that you're close to. So Ziklag is when some of you experience this, it's when you're just, you're just tired of the financial stress. It's just problem after problem after problem financially. And if that's you, I want to just highlight an opportunity for you if you're experiencing a, a Ziklag financial stress situation. And that is we're offering our Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. It's all online. And this can help you leave your money stress behind. Literally millions of people have gone through this. And it can be so helpful to you if you're experiencing financial stress. So if you'd like more information about this, you can go to our website or you can email info at nhww.org info at nhww.org and so let's go back to David so David he's distressed he's discouraged he feels betrayed he's hurting and he's probably thinking I can't do this anymore I can't keep fighting battle after battle after battle I'm, t I'm, I'm tired, I'm just done, I'm done. Here's the question I wanna ask you. What do you do when you're that discouraged? What do you do when you're that fatigued and you just feel like you can't keep going on? What, what do you do when people turn on you, when, when they talk stink about you, when they gossip about you, they hurt you? What do you do when you've lost something super valuable to you? How do you stay positive in that? Well, not only do you need to release your resentments, but you need to do the thing that David did when he was in this Ziklag experience. Take a look up on the screen. You need to do this. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Look at what David did. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. What does this mean? This word encouraged in the Hebrew is the word shachach. And, and here's what it means. It means to become strong. It means to become courageous and resolute in the Lord. It literally means that you garner strength from God. It means that you become strong because of God. It also means, listen to this, it means you encourage yourself. That's why the King James translation of this, it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. So it means you like preach to yourself. You remember God's faithfulness. So this is what David did. So his men are after him. So he encourages himself in the Lord. So he remembers God's faithfulness. He remembers how God provided for him. He remembers how God protected him. And you and I need to do the exact same thing when we're going through issues. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. By the way, one of the best ways to encourage yourself in the Lord is to get into God's Word. This is why we're always talking about this at New Hope Windward, is that God will encourage you over and over and over as you get into these words that He's breathed upon. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't been doing what we talked about last week, where Pastor TJ said, read a chapter a week. Man, just read one chapter at least a day and let God's words encourage you in the Lord. So David encourages himself in the Lord and then he prays and he says, God, should I go after these raiders? If I chase after them, will I 
be able to recover what we've lost. And God says, go, you will recover everything that you lost. And so it's amazing. So David and his 600 men, they're super tired and fatigued. They go after the Amalekites. Now get this, along the way, David, 200 of David's 600 men were so exhausted, they just like, they collapsed. They couldn't keep going. So now David has an even smaller army, 400 men going against a huge Amalekite army. And you know what happened? God gave them victory. They had less resources and a massive victory. God loves to take times where we have little and give us victory. If you're struggling financially, God can make a little into a lot. If you're struggling with energy, God can take a little bit of energy and make it into a lot. He can strengthen you. David and his men were fatigued, but as they went after the Amalekites, God's Holy Spirit in them gave them power to fight, to keep on keeping on. And listen, God wants to do the same for you. Whatever you're going through, even if you have just a little bit of energy, you keep on keeping on. You keep obeying God. You keep trusting Him. You keep encouraging yourself in the Lord. And you watch how His strength will help you fight battle after battle after battle. And you watch Him give you victory. Now, as we saw with David, in a very short period of time, after they lost everything at Ziklag, God gave them victory. And here's what I want to say to you from this. Please catch this. Listen, something good is about to happen in your life. I want you to say that. Something good's about to happen. Just say that with me. Something good's about to happen. Something good's about to happen. Listen, if you've been going through battle after battle after battle and you're tired and exhausted, something good's about to happen. I'm telling you, if you have been disappointed and you've been stressed and overwhelmed like David did, like David was, something good's about to happen in your life just as it did for David. If you've been facing trauma and mistreatment, something good's about to happen in your life. If you've been feeling all alone, something good's about to happen in your life. If you've been feeling fatigued, something good's about to happen in your life. If you've been in this long period of trouble, listen, in a short period of time soon to follow, something good's about to happen. Mark my words, God is encouraging you. So here's what we need to do. We need to take any rocks of resentment, any frustration, any irritation, anything we've been grumbling about, anything we've been complaining about, any person, we need to say, I completely forgive them as God has forgiven me. And then we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We need to stay close to Him. We need to preach to ourselves in those times that we're discouraged, just like David did. We need to remind ourselves that God is with us. He's not against us. That God is for us. That God will help us to keep on keeping on. And so let's do that. Let's keep releasing our resentments. Let's keep encouraging ourselves in the Lord. And you watch how God's going to help you stay positive in your problems. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. Well, if you would, if you would bow your heads with me, let's go ahead and go before God and let's pray. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for encouraging us today. Because Lord, the truth is, we've all been in a Ziklag experience. We're in a worldwide pandemic where we've experienced problem after problem after problem after problem. And so Lord, Within those problems, sometimes we can pick up some resentments. And Jesus, I pray that you would this week just help us to be aware of any known or unknown resentments that we might have towards others. God, just bring to mind any unforgiveness that we might have. And this week, Lord, we will do what you do towards us. We will choose to hurl into the ocean symbolically every offense every resentment every ounce of bitterness today Jesus thank you that forgiveness is so freeing and God thank you that you freely forgive us Lord I pray that you would help us to encourage ourselves 
in you, just like David did. There are times where we just got to preach to ourselves. We need to remember your faithfulness. We need to remember how you've provided for us. We need to remember that you are with us. We need to remember your many promises in your word. Oh God, help us get into your word every day this week. Fill us with encouragement. God, speak to us. I pray you share your promises from your word to each person hearing this so God, we can be strengthened from that encouragement. We can be emboldened and be ready resolute towards the problems and the battles that we have in life. Thank you, God. Thank you that something good's about to happen. Thank you. With everybody's heads bowed, if you haven't invited Jesus into your life, that is the most important thing for you to do to stay positive. Maybe you've already invited Jesus into your life. You have a relationship with him, and maybe you've drifted from that. I'd encourage you to renew your relationship with him. We do this every week. We renew our relationship with God. So if you'd like to begin or renew your commitment to Christ, just say this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, I turn from my sins and I turn to you. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen me. Encourage me. Free me from unforgiveness. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, I want to congratulate those of you who began or renewed your commitment with Christ today. Well done. That'll definitely help you stay positive. In a few moments here, we're going to sing another song, which the Bible says can fill us with God's Spirit and it can encourage us. So I want to just highly recommend that you stay on line here to sing this next song. Just a friendly reminder before we sing that song, uh, sign up for FPU. Check it out. I think it might help you tremendously. And so let's sing this last song and let's keep on keeping on as we stay positive with Jesus' help. have been chaotic to say the least and for some of us it might have caused fear and anxiety to arise more than we've liked for some of us it might have caused even our faith to waver a little but I know one thing is for certain that we have a God who fought death hell and the grave he is the God who is sovereign over all the earth so as we're singing this my prayer is that faith and hope would arise in your hearts to know that we have such, such a good God. Oh, oh, yes. 
Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Hope that you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. God bless.